Hey everybody, Michael Snyder, Pacific Northwest Weather Watch. Today is July 5th, and right now we're looking at the visible satellite imagery. You can still see all the forest fire being kicked off across Alberta, British Columbia here. We've got forest fire smoke across much of the Pacific Northwest here. We'll take a look at the forecast. Are so we going to kick some onshore flow across the area and clean our air out? Or are we going to remain stagnant? What kind of heat are we going to be dealing with here in the future? Are we going to bring some troughs across the Pacific Northwest? We'll check that out here uh, later on in the video. Checking out the visitor center here. Snow patch is almost gone. You can see the smoke aloft across the area. It really becomes apparent during the afternoon and sunset time as you go on in towards the evening. Nice day on the coastline. Look at that, about 59 degrees on the Washington coast. So get out there if you want to beat the heat. It's a nice view out there as well. Look at the thunderstorm chances for north central Washington. Nice graphic here from the National Earth Service Spokane issued this morning here. And uh, we're going to be looking at BC here in a moment because there's going to be a return of these afternoon thunderstorms here across some of the region. We'll look at that here in more detail in a second. This is looking at Seattle, Washington. Look at 88 degrees, 13 degrees above average, not quite to that record high set back in 2015. And no precipitation is in sight for Seattle or Portland. This is Spokane, 85, 5 degrees above average, not as warm as Seattle. And that's due to that thermal trough here, the compressional heating across uh, places west of the Cascades here. It's a little bit unusual for Seattle to be warmer than Spokane, but it was yesterday. And we'll check out what kind of precipitation chances Spokane will be getting here coming up in a moment also. This is 925 millibars, 2,500 feet. You can see we still have some of this offshore component going on here as we go through the day-to-day -day easterly winds. Fairly weak here across eastern Washington. We try to kick things offshore a little bit here as we go through Thursday evening, but winds are just quite weak aloft here. It does bring a little bit of gusty winds maybe in the east slopes of the Cascades through the gorge, but then you notice this east wind kind of return. You got this cat and mouse game of this onshore and offshore flow and relatively weak winds here across the system, so not a big onshore flow to really clean things out here across the Pacific Northwest. It's a shame. Now, looking at firework activity, you can see all the pollution we released into our atmosphere here with the firework activity here. This is my uh, air quality index sensor here at my home. Pretty typical for 4th of July. This is looking at vertically integrated smoke, and you can see this kind of moving around the area. No big, strong gradient developing here across the region to really kick this smoke out of the area. And there's actually a Shelton fire there, and you, you can see it moving towards the Seattle Metro even on some of Thursday night night there something we'll watch again tomorrow it, you know hopefully it can get that fire contained a little bit and keep that smoke at bay now looking at six hour precipitation watch during the afternoon hours here this is today you can't rule out a thunderstorm across the north cascades as we saw in the national weather service graphic from Spokane there across the rockies go on to thursday and you see that activity start to increase Friday afternoon, BC is really targeted here, especially the Rockies of Alberta and uh, BC as well. And some of the North Cascades and Northeast Washington could get involved in that as well as portions of Idaho and Western Montana also. But nothing for Seattle, Portland, or Vancouver, BC is expected. Here's Saturday afternoon again, kind of northern Washington zones. Maybe the Blue Mountains getting in the action a little bit here as well. And there we go. Sunday afternoon, start to wane that activity a little bit here. Monday, another little repeat there for BC, thunderstorm activity. Now, taking a look, Seattle Tacoma International Airport, it looks like we're going to remain above average here through the next 10 days or so. Something we'll watch, though. It looks like some of the models have a trough trying to come into the region here. And you can kind of see those temperatures re, uh, reflecting that onto the extended. More on that here in a moment. Portland International, something similar to Seattle. This is the GFS last night's run. If we put this into motion, you can kind of see that general troughing kind of hanging around the Pacific Northwest, increasing that thunderstorm activity mainly across British Columbia here in the higher terrain. Going through the extended, you can kind of see this ridge of high pressure building across the southwest, but the trough does not want to give up here across Pacific Northwest here. And if you go far enough out in the extended forecast here, take this with a grain of salt, we do show some interesting trough features here into the Pacific Northwest, but take that with a grain of salt for now. It's just something we're going to watch off into the future. Here's looking at yesterday afternoon's European run here. This is the ensemble control, which for all intents and purposes is the same as the deterministic now. But here we go, troughing kind of hanging off here. This would not bring, you know, this would not cool us down like it would as much in the winter. The gradients are fairly weak here, so we're still going to be above average under this scenario. Then you can really see this heat dome building across the southwest. And then this interesting troughing feature comes across, and that's kind of what the GFS is showing as well. So it's kind of an interesting feature here, a little bit of confidence to that, and we'll watch it here as we go day by day and see how this forecast evolves. This is looking at six to 10 day temperature probability outlook, and I put the average highs for Seattle, Portland, 
Spokane and Boise on here. So you can see you're expecting above average conditions here for Spokane, Boise, maybe just around average, maybe a little bit above for Seattle and Portland here over uh, the July 14th period coming up. So I just thought I'd start adding this to the forecast now because you can kind of see what areas are averaging what kind of temperatures. And so, you know, for Boise, you're probably a pretty good percentage that you're going to be above 89 for some of these daily highs as you go through mid-July. This was looking at daily max two meter temperature here and another very warm day for across uh, portions west of the Cascades today. Look at the Willamette Valley, mid and upper 90s. You know, Seattle could be up towards, you know, the upper 80s again. Eastern Washington becoming very warm as well. And here we go on into Thursday, another very warm day, but cooling down a bit across some of the Willamette Valley, cooling down a bit more places west of the Cascades as we go through Friday, but still above average here and still very warm east of the Cascades as we go through the period coming up here. And you can see Seattle bumping around that 80 degree mark here and the Willamette Valley into the mid and upper 80s here on in through next week as well. Here we go. Uh, we got an El Nino update here. So I've been waiting for this one for a few days here. This is June 1st. And the European does this once a month here, and we have new July data here. So let's see what it shows. Boom. Oh, actually went up a little bit here. So still, a lot of the ensemble runs here on the European are showing we're headed towards a strong El Nino coming up here. And a few of them have a very strong El Nino coming in here as well. And only a couple stragglers have moderate El Nino conditions. So we'll just continue to watch this as we go. It does have big implications here across Pacific Northwest. When we're in El Nino years, we tend to be much warmer and I have done an educational video on what we can expect here across Pacific Northwest. I'll probably do another one here over the next few months as well. And of course, we'll just watch this day at a time and watch these individual systems come in here and just kind of see what El Nino brings this fall and winter. So anyway, yeah, hope you guys are getting a... I hope it's not too smoky where you are. It looks pretty hazy out there this morning, not getting a lot of winds to stir things up. And hopefully we can keep this forest fire smoke out of a lot of the Pacific Northwest here. I would love to have a nice onshore flow day to clean things out. But it doesn't look like we're getting it at least too much here over the next few days. But anyway, yeah, um, we'll do this again tomorrow. We'll watch that trough and see if that thing trends off through our extended forecast. And until then, I will talk to you guys tomorrow.